Hello everyone, welcome to Daily IELTS English, a short video where I'll go over the techniques that my students use to improve their speaking scores in the IELTS test, but generally just to improve their overall English. I'll discuss the techniques and then I'll demonstrate. Now today we're kind of looking at part two of the speaking test and I'm just going to go through four main techniques that I teach my students to improve their English and then get the high score. I'll very quickly go over it and then I'll demonstrate. Just a reminder before I get into it, uh, we've got a question that I'm going to look at here and I would love to see your answer. Write it down in the comments below and uh, I'd love to read it, maybe give you a little bit of feedback. And as always, remember the techniques here are meant to be practiced. It's really easy to watch once and then think, okay, I understand, I know it, you're gonna forget it. So remember, practice these techniques when you're in your IELTS classes or practice these techniques when you are preparing. Uh, we're looking at part two. Specifically, let's take a look at that question. Uh, describe something you did that was new or exciting. You should say what you did, where and when you did this, who you shared the activity with, and explain why this activity was new or exciting for you. All right, so we'll quickly go through these techniques. Uh, the first one I always talk about is the time intro, all right? You start by saying a few weeks ago, a few years ago. Give the time, all right? Um, in my case, I would go a few years ago, I went rock climbing for the first time. Straight, simple. That's the first thing I say. I don't read the question, please. Do not read the question when you give the answer. It just kills your pronunciation. It always sounds like this. I am going to describe something that I did. Like, just don't do it. I mean, it's not wrong, but you're probably not going to do it well. Start with the time intro. A few years ago, I went rock climbing on my birthday. All right, so there you go. A few years ago. Um, second one, compare the past with now. In the past, now, or since we're talking about the past, in the past, this time. So I might say, in the past, on my birthday, because my birthday is in September at the beginning of school, I usually didn't do very much. So I'm talking about how in the past, on my birthday, I usually didn't celebrate it. Um, very sad story. If you grow up in North America and your birthday is in September, people forget it a lot. So I might say, yeah, in the past, I never really celebrated my birthday. I never did anything special. This time, I wanted to try something new. Now, I regularly try to do new things on my birthday. So again, I, I'm not, it, it, it's not just a technique. It's a way of organizing your ideas. It's a way of reflecting on your life. Um, another simple one, I had never. So show that this is a new thing. Um, I might say, you know, I, I regularly was on the tram and I would go by the rock climbing facility and I had never tried it. Or very simple, you know, I had never tried uh, rock climbing before and it was something I figured it was easy to do and I could do it once, no problem. Uh, I had never. Um, and another one might be usually. So again, compare. Is this something that is regular for you or not? So you might say something like, usually on my birthday, I would go to a movie. This time, something else. Usually, this time. Um, or I might say how things are different now. So on that birthday, I went rock climbing. Now, usually, I try to do something new. So those are the ways I try to teach my students to improve. And the main thing is that they're practicing this regularly. And that means that they're training their brains. They're training their brains to automatically think that way. And then when they go to the test, it's automatic. They don't have to remember anything. They just do it. All right, now I'm gonna demonstrate with my own answer. Um, I will probably use two, maybe three of these techniques. Maybe I'll use them all. I'm just gonna relax and tell the story in my answer to this question. So if I, if I miss some of them, I miss some of them. All right, but I'll probably use the time intro. Two minutes, start now. Uh, a few years ago, maybe four years ago, on my birthday, I went rock climbing for the first time. 
um, every almost every day that I would go to work on the tram, I would go by this facility that has, you know, you could see the large wall where there's people rock climbing. And I, um, yeah, I, I had never tried it. And I guess I just saw it all the time. And I was curious, you know, maybe this is something I would like to try. Uh, it was really cool. Like sometimes even on a Friday night, you see people at 8.30, 9.30 at night climbing this wall. Um, and I figured, yeah, like I'll, I'll, I'll try it out. Um, I had seen a few rock climbing movies on Netflix and, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to become a professional rock climber, but I thought, you know, be cool to try it out. Um, usually on my birthdays, I didn't really celebrate very much. Maybe I'd go out for dinner. Maybe. Um, I think just because I grew up, uh, in North America and September is when school starts. So if you have a birthday in September, like mine, you know, people sometimes forget about it, uh, except your family. And um, so I, I was just accustomed to not really celebrating. Uh, and, and yeah, when I had this opportunity, I thought, you know, I should try something new uh, on my birthday. And actually, since then, uh, I've often tried to do new things on my birthday, whether it's a new activity or it might be uh, like a new restaurant or a kind of food I've never tried. Um, and, I, you know, it was just, it wasn't that I, the rock climbing was particularly special, but just the idea that, you know, I should celebrate my birthday by trying something new. Uh, I, I think it's kind of important that people try different things in their life. And, uh, you know, I often recommend to my students that they try new things. There's two minutes. Um, Anyway, I'll, I'll just stop there, but I'll, I'll point out, like, I could have kept going because as soon as I start thinking, you know, in the past, a few years ago, I start reflecting and then the language just comes out. Now, if you're a sort of intermediate English student or, you know, you're trying to get to that higher level, that's all you really want to do is remember that, you know, these ways of organizing and reflecting is what's gonna feed the ideas and that's gonna feed your English. That's gonna feed your grammar. That's gonna feed your vocabulary. I have mentioned this in a few videos. When you're learning a language, ideas first, all right? The, the, I, your stories, your beliefs, the things you read and then you talk about, that's gonna fuel your English. Um, and I love watching my students practice this because I get to learn about them. I get to hear their cool, interesting stories. Um, and that's really, you know, at the end of the day, if you get a good IELTS test score, that's great. But kind of more importantly, tell good stories, communicate with people, connect with people. Thanks, everyone. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed that. Please uh, tell me about something new you tried in the bottom. I would love to read about it, maybe give you some feedback. Thanks a lot. Remember, language is a habit. So practice till you get it right and then keep going till you can't get it wrong. And I'll see you again soon.